All right, lesson two. Lesson two is about rounding and rounding decimals. Rounding means to, really, it means to make to the nearest place value. So for this case, we're going to look at underlying digits. When you find an underlying digit, it's important to remember the rule, okay? Five and above, you give, and sh give a shove. Four and below, you let it go, all right? Everything after the underlying digit needs to be zeros, or in the case of a uh, decimal number, just needs to be cut off, okay? So let me show you what I mean. We have the number 16 here. You'll notice that the number, the digit, one, is in the tens place. What we do is we look to the six, okay? When we look to the six, we know we follow the rule. Five and above, you give a shove. Six is above five, so we're gonna give the one a shove and make it a two. That six then becomes a zero, okay? Because it's a whole number, so everything after the rounded digit needs to be a zero. And then let's look at the next one. We have 56 and 1 tenth. We're looking for the ones. We're rounding that one, so we're gonna look directly to the right of the number. We're gonna follow the same rule here, okay? Five and above, you give a shove. Four and below, you let it go. That's, that one is below four. So we keep it the same. It just stays 56. And finally, when we're looking at a number like 758 thousandths, we're looking for that one in the hundredths position, that five. So we're gonna look directly to the right of it. Again, five, four and below, you let it go. Five and above, you give the shove. So eight is definitely above five. So we're gonna make that into zero and 76 hundredths. This can also be done with whole numbers. So the whole numbers here are 79 plus 32. That's not easy to compute mentally. So what we wanna do is we wanna find an estimated answer. So we're going to round to the nearest tens place. So 79, we're gonna to look to the right. We're gonna say that is going to become 80. 32, we're gonna to look to the right and we're gonna say that's going to stay at 30. And then we have 80 plus 30, which is much more easy to manage. We're going to get the answer of 110. See if you can solve a couple. Okay, I hope you were able to do those successfully. If not, uh, we will work with them more tomorrow. But the important thing to get to, to remember here is the purpose of estimating is to make it easy for you. When do you use this? Well, you use this when you look at a big problem and you estimate it first. So you get an approximate answer so you know where your real answer should be about. And then if you solve that problem and your real answer is nowhere near your estimated answer, you may have made a mistake. So it's a good way to look at a problem first, estimate it, find the sum or the difference, whatever it's asking for, and then actually solve the problem and see if your answers are somewhat close. If they're not, go back, rework, and check your work to see and find your mistakes.